A lot of people who come into the shop are really concerned that you can't use a Japanese knife to cut up a squash because they're so dense and you might chip your knife. All it really takes is a little bit of patience and you got to pay attention to what you're doing. So today we're going to, I got a couple different types of squash here. We're going to peel them and dice one up using a knife. I'll probably do this acorn squash. I think those are a little harder to do uh, for some people. Butternut squash is very similar. I'll kind of point out some the similarities and the differences there. We got a pumpkin and a spaghetti squash here too. But this kind of job, I think you need a bigger knife for. I personally really like a 240 millimeter Guto. I know Kevin says he likes to do it sometimes with a smaller knife and his uh, favorite way to bust open a squash is to throw it on the ground. So I don't know if we've got time for that. But I treat most round vegetables like a squash uh, like a melon, like any kind of things. We want to make it so that it's a little more uh, steady. It's not going to roll around on the cutting board on us. So I'm going to take the top and the bottom off of it. Now because the vegetable is really dense, a squash is dense, kind of like a sweet potato, um, you want to be pretty confident in your motions. We're going to make sure that we're going forwards and backwards, even if it gets stuck a little bit. Notice how I kind of pull back and I saw again. You don't want to ever find yourself forcing your way through uh, or, um, or kind of prying things apart. That's where the chips are going to happen. When it comes to peeling it, again, I kind of do it like a melon. I'm going to do a little bit at a time, starting at the top and following kind of the curve of the squash and a little bit of sawing. If you have to go back afterwards and kind of go at it from the top again to make sure you got everything, uh, that's that's okay too. Like no one's really watching you. Like, you know, there's no squash police who are gonna come knock down your door because you took a little bit too much off. A lot of people like to, uh, you can, I've heard some tricks, I've never tried it, but they say you can microwave a squash for a bit. Makes it a little bit easier to, to peel. I've, I've never done that. I, I've roasted them whole and um, scooped all the guts out for a puree, but uh, you know, this is how I normally do it if I wanted to dice it or, you know, I was making a soup or something like that. But yeah, lots of little motions, you know, don't do more than you're comfortable. Don't hack at it or twist or pry or scrape. Once you get all the skin off, that's gonna be really tough. It, it, it's, there's very few squashes where you can actually eat the skin. Uh, a delicata squash you could, they're a little small stripey squash. Those are pretty good for that. But there's also a bunch of seeds in here. I usually just cut it in half like that and then you can use a spoon to scoop all the guts out. If you were just gonna make a soup or like a squash puree or maybe not even anything as fancy as a puree, you just wanted to uh, have your like just kind of like a mashed squash with some butter and garlic or something like that. I might just leave it like this and throw a bit of olive oil, salt and pepper on these and put them in in an oven at like 350 for 45 minutes to an hour and they should be soft enough at that point. But you could dice it from there if you wanted. So then from here like we're not going to try to get like a super super fine dice you know maybe just something that's suitable for a soup. Just you know I find the best advice I can give you is just be confident, right? Nice, straight, confident motions. We're not wiggling. We're not trying to cut up more than what we're comfortable doing. But this is why I like a big knife for this job. Something like that, you know? If you wanted to do a butternut squash, um, these are what you find more often in the grocery stores. It's probably what you might reach for. Right about here, up, that's all dense flesh and you could treat it almost as two things. You'd cut your squash there and then you could peel the bottom and peel the top like I showed you before. And then this is all dense flesh and then down here's where you've got the seeds. We gotta cut it into a few pieces before we can really get started. Uh, we've got to peel it and I'm going to point out a couple of trouble spots for you. The big one is usually the stem here. You don't want to try to cut through that. You may as well cut through a 
through a branch. Like, you know, they're kitchen knives. They're not machetes. They're not made for that. So what we'll do is instead of trying to cut through it, we're going to cut that part off first. So when you're getting started with this, you got to make a couple of cuts first. So first we're going to cut off the top underneath the stem. That's going to avoid that, that nasty hard bit. We're also going to cut, put a cut in it around here and notice how I'm doing kind of, I back off and I go back in. Uh, if the knife wedges in there, it's going to, uh, that it gets real tempting to pry it and twist it. And again, that's where you chip your knife and then you get mad and you call me names and so on and so forth. We're also gonna take the bottom off because when we cut the bottom off, now we've got two flat surfaces here and these things are gonna be a lot steadier for when I go to peel them. So now we've got two pieces. The seeds are in the little stubby one. That's all solid. Like if you, if you look, right? Nothing but squash there. This side, which was the bottom of the squash, is where they keep all the seeds. So you scoop those out. The spoon works real good. Doesn't take, you know, nothing too fancy here. And then from here, you can do whatever you want. If you were just gonna make a soup with it or a puree, I would just cut it into bigger chunks like this. You know, when again, when we were in restaurants, like you usually make a soup out of all the bulbs. And if you were trying to do like a nice dice or something, you'd use this stuff because it's a lot easier to get nice pieces from that. So like I told you before, uh, the most important thing when you're dealing with a squash is, uh, you know, take your time, pay attention, really try to avoid any of those twists or prying or, you know, getting frustrated and swinging at it like a fruit ninja. Um, you just want to take your time and you won't chip your knife. Thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the manager of the Ottawa store. And uh, if you need a hand, you can reach out to any of us at hello at knifeware.com. Check out the website, you know, see if you can get a big old knife like this for squash. I don't know if I can. I don't think if I can. Is it still on? It's still on? You think I can crack it with my head? I don't think I put a dent in it. You think I put a dent in it? Okay, I'm gonna try. Okay. One. Someone count me in. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, not at all.